Band-Aids don't give you a... You'll hear high-level people, high-A-list high people, like, they'll catch on to something every now and then, and but they never catch on to the big picture. And then I started realizing the more that I study this stuff, the people that really understand the big picture, I mean, it's not exactly like this now because a lot of people are figuring this stuff out. So a lot of you, especially in this audience, there's a really smart people in this audience because we got a lot of PhDs. We got a lot of, you know, high, high educated individuals out there, education people. Um, but it used to like, and still to a, to a degree, you kind of have to get up to like the Brzezinski Kissinger level before there's knowledge of what's really going on. I'm saying, I'm, I mean, and I mean like, full spectrum knowledge, right? Understanding what the plan is with entertainment, what the plan is with diet, what the plan is with social organization, what the plan is with education, with religion, with blackmail, black markets, co-opting, how wars are planned, how mass media is strategy, force aversion, destruction, Hollywood as a, as a role in this, the music industry. I mean, not many people figure out the big picture until you get to that level and then people who figure all this out, they kind of get to a point where it's like, well, I, I guess I can either go along with this or like they're blown away, right? Like, whoa, this is really going on. So when you see these goofuses, I mean, these people are like, the celebrities are like puppets, right? Like on a puppet string. And they're just used by higher level people. And if you play along with this, you know, you can have the, some of the fiat money. <laughs> okay, so we'll give you some of the fake-ass fiat money if you play along with all this degeneracy. Because the, the this has a crucial role in, in breaking down the culture. And how was this learned? Well, it was all learned in the Cold War. Because pop art, Jackson Pollock, uh, Andy Warhol, Congress for Cultural Freedom, those were all entities that were funded heavily by the CIA for the purpose of winning the Cold War through the arts and letters. And that's why they would hire postmodernists. They would hire de deconstructionists. They went to France and they would hire people to promote certain ideas during the Cold War, particularly postmodernists, deconstructionists, Derrida. These people literally all had CIA connections because the Congress for Cultural Freedom wanted to promote uh, not just all of the arts and the control of the arts and what the arts are, what they, what they represent, but also a technique to combat Sovietism, cosmism, realism from, from Soviet so-called art, which is its own weird acid trip of its own. Right. Uh, let's see if we can find some of that. But it was also to begin to inculcate the idea of pure relativism. And the best way to do this is not necessarily, I mean, cultural degradation contributes to that, but um, the arts are a perfect vehicle for relativism because they could sell the emotivism that there's no such thing as beauty. There's no such thing as aesthetics or any objective standards in aesthetics. So therefore, don't you see everything is purely subjective and it's just tastes. So if you don't like uh, Jared Leto as a vampire Santa with his own head, um, you're a bigot, right? Because there's no such thing as, as beauty. There's no such thing as standards. And so this kind of art, you have to understand, is actually seen as warfare. And this, the Satanists call it aesthetic, T-E-R-R-O-R-I-S-M. And it's not a joke. It's a real thing. They, they think that it's a way to wage spiritual warfare because when you promote uh, the ugly, it's seen as part of the dialectic, right? So you're just on one side of the dialectic of good and evil, beauty, ugly, 
normality, deformation, right? You're just part of the process of the whole. And so to do actions like this by these people, and especially a lot of these Hollywood lunatics who are part of cults, literally. I mean, I think Jared Leto's like trying to start his own cult, didn't he? <laughs> I mean, toxic culture is basically viewed by these people as a ritual working that enacts the subversion that you think is part of your revolution. You think you're part of the edgy, just like in the French revolution, just like with St. Simon, St. Just, uh, but shout out to Tristan, by the way, because in his uh, stream where he was doing covering Billington's fire in the minds of men, I had forgotten about the fact that it was actually the journalists in the French revolution that were really pioneers of social justice. And they would use journalism. They were the new ethicists, right? Dictating morality, to everybody. And they would get fellow revolutionaries killed, get their head chopped off like you boy. Uh, Larry Gito right here. And they would do it because they would, they would do exposés exposed, right? Uh, uh, because if you didn't, if you weren't revolutionary enough, you had to be exposed exact parallel to the blue check mark, social justice warriors of today, exactly what they did in the revolution. And I had forgotten about that. We actually covered that in my uh, French revolution classes as I went pretty deep on that in grad school uh and so shout out to tristan because he got he brought that back to my memory when he was covering fire in the minds of men that's ex it's no different than french revolution and by the way the bolsheviks did the exact same thing because they were a continuation of the jacobins who were the illuminati right the jacobin illuminists thought that if they could destroy all society they become agents of chaos agents of destruction uh, and, and aesthetic terrorism as part of this ritual working, then they contribute to the rebirth of the new society, the Phoenix from the ashes. And so that's why a lot of the satanic cults, a lot of the, the hermeticists, they have a, a cyclical view of history where they just believe that this is all necessary. So I'm just telling you, that's their justification, right? That's why they think they're part of, you know, the great work is that to tear down the existing order is just part of the work that's necessary to erect the new society. And that's exactly what the Frankfurt School people said, by the way. I studied under people from the Frankfurt School. So I know it very well. Now, that doesn't mean that everybody in the Frankfurt School is an Illuminist. Again, you can get different situations with different people. I mean, a lot of these people are just hedonistic, degenerate atheists. They don't know anything. But sometimes they do know stuff, right? <laughs> I mean, uh, what the heck? This kind of seems to hint at like, that's cultural appropriation of, and like having slaves. I mean, I'm not sure. Like, how do you, but I mean, the, the Hollywood people, they'll like have, all this kind of stuff going on all the time, right? I'm saying, what, what am I trying to say without f flagging the freaking algorithm? You can't even talk. Um, like they will treat and signify that they own people and have modern day slaves and they can get away with it, right? Because they're liberal, so-called, right? I mean, what is this stuff? Look at this. By the way, I think a lot, if you've done acid too, a lot of this stuff is just like, anytime somebody does acid, they think anything is genius and gorgeous and amazing and, and philosophy, right? I was tripping acid, dude. Like, I was watching some, some videos of people that had done acid for the first time. And they were like, man, like when we came out of that convenience store, like when we looked at the rappers... And like the wrappers around the candy were just sparkling in the sunlight and it's the most beautiful thing ever. You think everything is beautiful? Even nothing? <laughs> like even 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 trash is beautiful, right? And that's what these people think. Like they they're mind bombed. They're always and they're always talking by the way about tripping acid and doing drugs. 
which by the way, don't actually give you all of these great creative insights that they think they're getting. Uh, if I do acid and like put on like a dress or whatever, <laughs> right? Like it's genius, dude. Who is this dude? Now this is supposed, this is actually alchemy, right? This is a reference to the uh, hermaphrodite in the alchemical tradition. I'm not joking about that. That's, that's what this is intended to be. Uh, but who the heck is this dude? Oh, so edgy. But you know what's weird about the, this stuff? It hasn't changed since... What, like... Remember in... Like 2006, 7, 8, when people really started online doing Illuminate Confirm type stuff analysis and you, you you would watch the vmas you would watch the uh all these dumb award shows right the super bowl halftime show and then de you deconstruct it right well back when everybody started doing that and watching this stuff like have you noticed that none of it has really changed it's not any different than the stupid crap from 10 years ago it's all just regurgitating kind of the same uh, grasping for edginess, weirdness, and it's weirdness for the sake of weird, which is not weird. Like, you remember in high school, weird people were authentically weird. Like, that dude is weird. Like, Nathan over there, right? That, there was a, there was a Nathan that I went to high school with who was, he was a master of anime back in the 90s for anybody knew about anime right and like a trench coat kind of dude and he everywhere he would go he would like do the like <laughs> like how they, if you've watched malcolm in the middle you know how they make fun of like the the spurg kids uh dewey's class right the special kids like i went to high school with dudes that did that 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 did the like anytime they were going anywhere from like one class from the lunchroom to the classroom <laughs> They were on like a, an imaginary moped. I mean, that's, that's, I've really been around people like that. I'm sure everybody has been around the authentically weird dude, but that's authentically weird. This is not, this is not authentic. This is just Hollywood celebrity garbage people trying to get attention. Now, who are these people anyway? I've never even heard of these people. You know what this reminds me? By the way, uh, it's it's almost kind of prophetic. I mean, I'm sure this stupid thing has always been weird. But it reminds me of the way that Chris Tucker acted in Fifth Element. Remember that? It's like a cross between Prince and RuPaul. I mean, this feels like what YouTube is. I mean, it feels like uh, like big YouTube channels that are just like this. And I mean, I know that RuPaul had a, uh, he was on MTV already in the 90s, but it's just, isn't it just weird that this, so he's live streaming this, whatever this is, this ridiculous show. So by the way, so everybody's always asking about Madonna like how does Madonna look so young well first of all she doesn't look young she just she looks gross but uh I gotta have dinner one time with uh somebody who was her security guard and he explained this mystery by the way so if you want to know I'll tell you a little, a little inside of Hollywood secrets we're gonna make you a big star that, that's a character I should bring back Jay Weinstein we're gonna make you star but he uh, he told us why how this actually goes down. So people were like, "It's a clone, dude. Madonna's a clone. She's been cloned." That's like the dumbest conspiracy ever, right? No, you know what it is? It's a mask. She pays all this money for this like super secret mask <laughs> that when she does anything on camera, it's like this 
mask that stretches and then when you take when she takes it off which she makes sure that nobody ever like, takes a picture of her she looks like everybody else's grandma right but that's that's how she does it that's why she doesn't look like she's aged so be 